What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of E-Electric Productions. I hope you guys had a great Thanksgiving yesterday. I really hope you had a great time. Let me know in the comment section below anything fun or interesting that happened to you on Thanksgiving. I myself ended up getting sick, so rather than going and sharing food with friends and family, I ended up being on the couch all day watching the second or the second season of Stranger Things. It was pretty good. Anyway, one of the gentlemen in the comment sections for one of my other videos requested that I take a look at this game called Rust Bucket. And Rust Bucket is actually uh, tied to another game that I just reviewed here recently called Tower Fortress. And Tower Fortress was a game I really enjoyed, I thought it was great, and some of the same dev team is involved in Rust Bucket, which I believe came prior to Tower Fortress. So I went ahead and installed Bluestack on my computer and just put my profile on there and downloaded this from the Google App Store. So let's take a look at Rust Bucket and see what we think here. It is a basic dungeon crawler, turn-based dungeon crawler, and it ramp ramps up in difficulty pretty quickly, actually. So it's more of a puzzle game, in my opinion. So here we go, we've got slimes here. And it takes them two turns for every one of mine which doesn't really make sense what I just said there, but what I basically mean is is that they pause for a turn between movements. So I move twice, they move once. And unfortunately, I um, and I'll try to cut this out from this point forward, but there are ads in the game. So with those ads, um, yeah, unless you do an in-app purchase, you're going to have ads in the game. But you could play the game other than that for free, so that's nice at least. Okay, so let's take out these guys. So you can see I get two turns for every one of theirs. Which makes taking them out a lot simpler than some of the later enemies. Now, this is something I want to point out that the game does. If you're patient, it will paint a red X on the screen there. So if I was to move there, that guy would kill me. So. It's got a pretty good tell uh, whether or not you're going to receive damage or not. Oops. There's the red X. Now these C buttons are a clear point, and more importantly, they're a reset point. And one thing you can do is you can use these jars. They don't contain any goodies, but you can use them to burn a turn, meaning you'll stay in the, you'll stay in the same spot and the monsters will move, but you'll you'll stay in the exact same position. So, that's nice. So that would kill me. There we go. And the flame killed them. Let's activate the flame. Oh, let's burn a turn. Burn another turn there. And you're starting to see the rhythm of this game. It's it's all about positioning, it's all about timing. Alright. So I just skipped an ad there. So the deal with the pigs is, is that they cannot move around corners in a single turn. They have to position themselves. The keys are interesting because I've got the key but I can't unlock it. You actually have to get the key to touch the lock for it to unlock. Nope. Got overly ambitious there. So we can take out this first pig without any issues. I need to kite these pigs into the corner. And then it's going to take them two turns to get around the said corner. There we go. We've got the key. I'll let it touch the lock. And this pig's a little different. Now, this is weird. I actually thought I had to rescue this guy. It's impossible to rescue this guy. And you've got to hit that pig twice due to his armor. So when the pigs kill a person, they take the key. All right, skipped another ad there. So this skull, we actually have to pull around the clear point take him all the way down here, and when we make the turn there, he's available for us to uh, make our, our timely attack. We're going to roast that skull. Time all this out perfectly. 
And this is going to spawn another skull here. Which, if we're patient, we can take out. Move on up. And move on down. So you're starting to see the ebb and flow here of the game. Oh, nope, that's not going to work. Skipped another ad, so the ads are annoying. Um, and if you if you like the title, it might be worth it to you to do the single in-app purchase that gets rid of them. We're going to use this tactic of hitting one of the jars to burn a turn. Now, I actually struggled with this part for a good bit until I figured it out. And the reason I struggled so much is because there's an innate... Um, what's the word? It's like a built-in thing where we want to kill all the enemies on the screen. It's like programmed into us psychologically. And you want to leave that skull there alone. There's no point in killing him. And I skipped another ad. Now we start moving into more of the challenging section. Now that pig gets in the way there. So we want to pull him down. There we go. He won't actually hurt me. But he will push me off the edge of the cliff. Whoops. I screwed it up. I screwed it up bad. I can fix it. I can make it all better. There we go. And this is actually where I get stuck, believe it or not. I can't figure out how to best this part. I know that I need to push that there so I can eventually push the block down. But if I was to push that block up right now, it would actually kill me. Because the flame would move into place. And I've tried burning turns... And I can't seem to get the timing right. And you can't burn a turn by pushing yourself into the wall. And that kills me. Alright, skipped another ad there. And it looks like I've encountered a bug as well where it's, uh, it's the sound's not working. Hmm. Anyway, guys, that's going to actually do it for this video. Um, this is a game where I'm probably going to download it onto my phone now after actually playing it. I've enjoyed it very, very much. It is a simplistic title, but this is a great time waster uh, if you're just sitting there with nothing to do. Too many mobile titles rely these days heavily on the whole mechanic of, um, you know, oh, you have only so many times that you can play the game before you have to let that recharge or you can pay coins. Oh, you have to... Everything is just based off of microtransactions, and that has gotten so old. I am so tired of that mentality in mobile titles. There used to be... For me personally, I always go on the mobile store and I look at what's the recent top paid app because I'd rather pay for the app outright and even then these days it seems like you're still stuck with in-app purchases even in the paid titles so this is a fun little game where it uses your mind it's a puzzler and it's the it's the perfect title for whether you're getting ready for bed and you just want to like challenge yourself a little bit or you're just sitting there and needed to burn some time while you're waiting for something um, I think it's a it's a great uh, it's a great game in the respect that the art style is charming the gameplay is fun yes you have to watch the ads but then again you could purchase an in-app purchase that will turn off the ads but the depth the devs have given you the option to play for free too if you just want to just deal with the ads as well. They've done a great job. This is handling mobile titles the way they should be handled. It gives you, the player, the control over what you want to do and gives you the full game at your fingertips while um, letting you decide if you want to donate money to the dev team or not. So bravo to the devs for handling it in such a tactful and tasteful manner. Uh, other than that though, it's, it is a simplistic title. What you see is what you get. 
but it ramps up in difficulty fairly quickly. I'm going to install the game just because I want to get past this puzzle uh, and see there, there's got to be something that I'm missing here. And I'm sure it's something simple that it's just as I'm sitting here, I'm just not seeing it. So thank you so much for stopping by. I really appreciate it. To the gentleman who requested that I take a look at this title, thank you very much. I always appreciate recommendations for games. One note on that, when people recommend to me um, intense MMOs or RPGs, it's harder for me. I work a full-time job, actually two jobs, and for me to sit there and pour 40 hours into a game in order to give it a proper review or a fair shake, I just I don't have the time to do that right now. I wish that I did, but I don't. I'm just not at that stage of life where I can do that. So uh, if recommendations come to me for titles that I can look at relatively quickly and do a review on, then I'm more than happy to try to do that. And uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. So again, thank you so much for stopping by. I really look forward to seeing all of you on the next episode of E-Electric Productions. And until then, game on, everyone. Bye-bye.